So at this point, I'm sure you might be wondering, all right, yeah, we do need to make that transition from traditional over to digital, or maybe you've known for a while, yeah, we, we need to figure this out, and you've said, okay, we're gonna do it. But there's a really big looming question, and that is, well, where do we start? How do we do this? Well, you're in luck, because today, we're gonna go over the four key questions you need to ask yourself before you start a digital marketing campaign. I'm Danny Gonzalez. And I'm Judson Voss. And this is Industrial Sage. All right, you're ready to jump into a digital marketing campaign. Here are these four key questions that you need to ask yourself before you jump into this. What are they, Judson? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just gonna ask you. No, the, there's a couple, and there's a couple questions within inside four. the questions. Yeah. There's actually four, uh -huh. but then there's a couple more inside there. Okay. Um, first one, I'm, I'm just gonna throw this out. Mm -hmm. First question um, is, well, what's your budget? Right. Is that a relevant question that you should ask before you jump oh. into a digital marketing campaign? Only if you have a business. Okay, so oh, all right. For everybody else doing digital marketing, it's pretty no. irrelevant. All right, but, excellent. Yeah. But yeah. if you do have a business, yeah. and you're B2B, yeah. and your manufacturing and industrial uh -huh. space, right? Yeah. This would be a relevant question to ask. It probably would be. Okay. Uh, if, you're, right. if you're gonna need to spend money, it'd probably be good to know how much money you can spend. Um, and you know, the, so this is sort of that chicken and the egg thing, right? Mm -hmm. People sure. say, hey, uh, you know, how much do we have to spend? It's like, I don't know, how much is it worth to spend uh, on this type of thing? So, you know, you can go from, a, from two approaches. And there might be, you might have a business where your CEO came down and said, look, I'll throw this much at it. You mm -hmm. figure out where to spend it. That, that is a situation. Uh, I think if you're trying to convince the rest of the organization that you should do more digital marketing, the other approach could be, um, here's how I'm measuring it and building back up and saying, okay, I will, we want to get $200,000 in revenue, whatever that number is. So going backwards to that, mm -hmm. here's what I need to do and here's how much it's going to cost me to get that two hundred grand. So a theoretical ROI that I'm going to get out of it is the other way to look at it too. Okay, so start with the end in mind, right. and start with yeah. The, what, what are the goals? Yeah. So maybe looking at setting up uh, success metrics. So those that maybe those KPIs just in terms of of uh, revenue that you hope to, to hope to close. So yeah. okay, that makes sense. Start start backwards and and, and move from there. Yeah. So um, the that was that was pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, the other approach is the is the top down, which is I've been given this much money, which is. Actually, almost a little harder because it's now That's it's true. like, okay, yeah. where am I going to spend it? Right. But I think you, you do the same thing again. You go from the bottom up and mm -hmm. say, somebody says, I've got 50 grand to spend on digital marketing for this year, whatever the period of time right. is. Right. I would do the same thing. I would start with how many sales do I think I can get out of that? What mm -hmm. kind of revenue can I get? And then go back through all the channels and different ways that I'm going to generate leads and you know, you know how much is going to cost me to get content and that kind of stuff and go backwards through that to come up with how I'm going to spend the 50 grand and what do I get out of it? All right, so really starting with the end in mind yeah. and, and kind of working backwards, or as you mentioned there, the, uh, the going, say, hey, look, this is X, this is what we have to spend, and you know, it's 50 grand or whatever, and then and kind of moving from there. So uh, the next question, we figured out a budget, what mm -hmm. that is, and um, the next thing is, I would think is, well, who's your audience? You know, yeah. Who are we going to actually like target? Now, that may be the first question too, depending on how, how you sure. go about yeah. it. But yeah, I mean, that's the isn't that the classic marketing, marketing thing? Question. Is, yeah, right. is, yeah, is who, who's the who's the customer? What's the persona? Mm -hmm. I think one of the nice things about digital marketing is having that question helps you answer how much do I need to spend? Mm -hmm. Because and we were just talking about it a little while ago. If I'm going after a small group, there's this little acorn of 300 people in the whole right. country that are interested in this product. <laughs> Knowing that customer is important for the budget. But then the next thing is, is okay, if I only got 300 people, I can almost go out and just ask them, what, <laughs> yeah. you know, where do you hang out? Who are you? What are your demographics? Right. All that kind of thing. But that is the important piece, is, is figuring out who that person is. Because if I don't know who they are, mm -hmm. I don't know where they hang out online, I don't know what their touch points are, I'm gonna spend a lot more budget to get to those people and resonate with them than if I had all those answers ahead of time. So yeah, I think, you know, that's the key, is knowing who that person is. Um, knowing what they like, what they don't like, what problems oh, yeah. do they have, what Absolutely. problems do they want solved, all that kind of thing is the number one key thing. And it's crazy how simple it is to go and do that because unless this is your very first day in business, you have customers. Hopefully. And, yeah, and <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> or that whole budget question is now irrelevant. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right.
<laughs> how much advertising can I get for free? Yeah. Um, so you know, you've got all these customers that exist already in your business. Mm -hmm. That's all data analysis. Mm -hmm. You just yeah. go out and you know the persona already. You just have to use those people you already have to figure out who the new people are. You're, you know, if you have 100 sales, your 101st sale, it's probably going to be the same person the first 100 from a persona standpoint mm -hmm. went to. So just find out who those people are and transfer that to your new campaign. Totally makes sense. Yeah. There was a key word that you, that you used that I wanted digital to circle marketing. back. Digital marketing. Yeah, yeah, it was digital yeah. marketing, which is a big, a big one. Uh, personas. Yeah. Persona development. Um, let's t I want to talk a little bit about that because, it, yes, yes, who are you targeting, your target mm -hmm. market, all that stuff. Yes, it's, it's, that's marketing 101. But personas, for whatever reason, I feel like, kind of get like lopped off. It's like, you yeah, know, we know, yes, we know who we're targeting and the, you know, but when you really look at that person, you develop a profile as far as, okay, um, even the, the, a persona in terms of we're selling somebody in this vertical, right. like the buyers are buying for totally different reasons or you have different influencers, people. This. So it's, I mean, let's talk about that a little bit, you know, yeah, like, is that important? Yeah, when you're talking B2B, I mean, that gets, it's a more of a complexity. So mm -hmm. it's not, you know, be hanging out at home after a couple of beers with a credit card on Amazon. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. It's a different buying right. process, right. hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you never know. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, in B2B, you have different levels. And we always, or we always, that's a bad term, we tend to focus on the purchasing person, mm -hmm. the person buying it. But the truth is, is there's all these different touch levels. Yeah. You've got, if you're a big enough organization, you got the CEO who might butt in once in a while, give his or her two cents and you know, and throw that in there. You have the CFO, certainly, if it's an asset purchase, that's going to be signing off on mm -hmm. it. And you have the purchasing person that we talked about. You probably have engineering or, or project person that is the one that's putting the whole project together that's going to be involved in it. So these are all different people and they all have different personas. And yeah, you're right. You, you have to attack each of those and you have to to take that into account when you build those personas. Because right, because the, the the purchasing decision is really ultimately going to be it could be a, it's a different factor. Yeah. Uh, so your your CEO versus your your end user has actually yeah. going to be using that for totally different reasons. Your CEO yeah. is going to be looking at you know bottom line and if, you know uh, how effective is this solution going to be solving this challenge. Whereas the end user is going to be like, man, this doing it the other way is a pain in my butt, <laughs> and this is going to be a million times easier. Yeah. And so. It, who, you know, and then the CFO is going to be looking at you know the bottom line and all that and all that good stuff. So yeah. different reasons buying the same product. Uh, but the other thing that I would put in there too, as far as personas, is even though you have a product that may be relevant, it could be relevant to thirty different industries or whatever. Yeah. You got to be really careful that making sure that the marketing that you're going to put in really speak. If you really want to do it effectively, well that really speaks to those challenges in, let's say, you're relevant in healthcare and uh, automotive, right? Yeah. Same product, they can go into both those industries, but they may have totally different needs and totally different challenges. Yeah. And so if you try to go in there and just kind of like, whoosh, let's just send it, be things to everybody, to everybody yeah. it's not going to be as relevant versus saying, hey, we know that you have this challenge in healthcare, it, you know. Yeah. And, and, and so I think it, that's, that's a big piece that often gets missed. I think because... Honestly, it gets a, a, it gets a lot more granular. Yeah. Granular. It's more. It's difficult. And it's like, well, I guess I got to think about this a little bit more. And it's then, work. You know, Is that the word you're trying yeah, to say? Yeah, I think that's the word that I was that I was yeah. going for. It's yeah. work. And so. I think and sometimes I think it's the marketer's job. Let's say you have a product launch, you make a great great point. So I've got this product, and it touches four different market segments. Mm. And from the product manager standpoint. Their idea is okay. We're gonna nail them all right now because it's a product yeah. launch, <laughs> right? You know, and, it, and it's a rocket ship and it's taking <laughs> off. And I think it's the marketer's responsibility to come back and say, "Look, we're in this for the long haul. Mm -hmm. Unless we need to sell all these widgets by the end of next month, mm -hmm. let's hit one segment. Let's make sure we've built the correct persona and we've really honed in the whole process and go after that one. While we're going after that one, then we'll start to build those other ones right. from the knowledge we've learned from right. this one. But it is, I mean, you know, it's difficult if I got to go after four different groups all at the same time that have totally different messaging and totally different content. Um, they live in different places. The rock they're under there we've got to pull up is totally different. Right. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know how you can be successful doing that. Well, it's like having, you know, five different targets and you yeah. have, you know, one bullet or one dart. It's like, yeah. okay, well, this it's not a magic dart. It's going to hit all five and you pick one and you throw it and it's yeah. be laser focused on that. Right. Um, exactly. You know, and that, that feeds into um, maybe the, the, the next question in here is saying, okay, maybe if, we, if we've just, We've defined the persona. 
who that person, we've defined a, that, that, seg, that market segment that we're gonna go into. Mm -hmm. That next question is, okay, what are their challenges? Mm -hmm. what, what keeps them up at night? What are they <laughs> frustrated trying to figure out? Oh my gosh, I'm trying to figure out how to you know, solve this thing and we need, you know, we, we need to be able to lower the output on whatever. You know. yeah. What is that? You know? yeah. um, and and I, I think that the, the, the other piece though that we can go a, a little bit like a deeper level with on that is also looking at you know, the way that most a lot of manufacturers and, indust and, and industrial companies work. I mean, it's it's not necessarily we're selling directly to the end user. I'll, most of the time, you're selling through a distributor. Right. So you almost have you have an, the end user who the distributor is, has got the relationships with, and they're selling that product through. But you also have that distributor, that dealer, or or, or maybe you're dealing with independent salespeople. That could be consider that part of you know your target because. You know, their challenge, if you think about it, is, which is, comes back to you, <laughs> is that they're repping a million different products, yeah. or maybe there's competitive uh, products, in which, so how do you, as a manufacturer, stay in front of them and make sure they're incentivized or that it's very easy for them to be able to sell and push your product through? And I think that's a really key thing to, to, to be able to look at that kind of is, that, kinda, that sometimes gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. Yeah, yeah or the other side of it, which is, I only sell to the distributor, however it gets to the, yeah. the end user or yeah. whatever, doesn't matter, or uh, you hear this a lot, I, I, I sell to the distributor, they don't tell me about the end user, mm -hmm. so there's no way I can get information to know what to sell to them. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because, we, and we all do it, I, I'm guilty of it too, but if you were to come back and say, okay, you only sell to the, to the, to the distributor, mm -hmm. do you know who the end users are? I got no idea. Yeah. Do, okay, I know you don't know their name. Do you know who's using the product? Well, sure, the people that work in this, 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 and this industry. And it comes, and I'm being semi sarcastic when I say it. it. You know, Google's broken on your computer. That's the only reason you can't find out who those people are. <laughs> yeah. But the, the reality is true. Every product that we sell, we know who the end user is. Mm -hmm. We don't know their name, but we can find five of them. Sure, right. <laughs> you know, find right. out what their, what their pains are, as you said, and, and get all that kind of stuff. But you make a really good point. It is two levels usually have two totally different needs mm -hmm. that need to be faced and two different sets of problems that have to be overcome for them. And it can't be the same mess. I mean, the message has yeah. got to be tailored. It's got to be, it's, it's got to be very different because, yeah. again, those challenges are, are very different. Yeah. Um, and, and so where we talked about in a, a previous video, we, we, we touched on content marketing and talking yeah. about how using that, that, the marketing and the content that you create that's going to be put into your digital marketing campaign needs to speak to those challenges. That's how it's going to be really relevant. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, you know, when you look at the more traditional sense of marketing, that, oh, we're going to just put an ad with our name in a trade magazine or even a banner ad. Let's say that's digital. We're, we're going to do a banner ad on you know, wherever. Yeah. Uh, and it just says, XYZ Company, the best you can get. You know, it's like, okay, great. Am I going to click on that? Or, I, you know, versus yeah. having some sort of messaging talking about maybe it's a case study on how your product was able to help to solve XYZ challenge that's targeted to these people that have yeah. the same challenge. That's going to be a whole hell of a lot more relevant than, hey, buy from us because we got the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a great yeah. point. Now, you know, we always talk about start with the question. Mm -hmm. That's what your ad should be. But the question should be about the problem. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, we're just thinking about one we just did that it was about um, dissolved oxygen. We won't go into why that's a bad thing, but <laughs> yeah. it's beverages, it's a bad thing. So the ad was a very simple ad, and it was beverages in a can. So all the ad said was, is dissolved oxygen kicking you in the can? <laughs> and so that, you know, that addresses the yeah. problem. And so the person that has that problem, they can quickly identify with that. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to go and click on that long mm -hmm. before they click on an ad that says, here's our product, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, totally makes sense. All right. Um, and then I guess the last question we really want to look at. So, so far we've looked at uh, the question of being that, uh, what's your budget? Yep. Who are you targeting? So your audience, really drilling it down into those personas. What challenges do they have? And then the last one is, once we've kind of figured that out, it's okay now, because that will help you essentially figure out you know, the content that you need and, mm -hmm. and where these people are, which we kind of glossed over a little bit. Um, but... Um, just like how how are we going to get that messaging to them mm. is is really that next question that distribution uh, the content and distribution method like what are we going to use and how are we going to get this into the hands how are we going to get eyeballs on it yeah so. yeah and if you think about it um, one thing I would do is like when you go to market something mm -hmm. think about how do people get to you mm -hmm. you know and from work 
You know, sure. The yeah. things you want to buy at work, how are people getting to you? And sort of thinking about that's great. Those yeah. channels and, and saying, and you know, yeah, I'm ripping off other people. But that's fine. I like swipe is the <laughs> yeah. term. It's called st steal with integrity and pride every time. So if something <laughs> works for somebody else, copy that and, and do that. Done. And they're not competing with you. It's not a big deal. But so yeah, look at how people are. When you buy something from a business standpoint, how is that getting to you? And what are those effective channels that people are getting to you from? And sort of put those in your pocket as you get ready to, to start that campaign. But I think the other piece, if you think about, we've talked about, okay, who am I going after? I've got this sort of vertical in an organization, all the influencers, and then I've got the different markets and they go this way horizontally. So I'm hitting all these pieces. I need to create a matrix of all that content and how it's fitting in there. And mm -hmm. I got distributors and end users and you know, I got purchasing people <laughs> and build that whole matrix out and then go from there and say, that type of content, what's a good channel to, to feed it down? Um, a Facebook post talking about the technical details mm -hmm. of whatever this product is, you know, sort of like a, a video spec sheet mm -hmm. and playing on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I can sort of cross that off the list mm -hmm. in the matrix and avoid that. Now another product might you know, have a social piece to it, and Facebook is a good place for it to come from. So I think you look at the content, you look at things that work that you know you've been touched by, and try to start to figure it out from there, and then do small tests. <laughs> yeah, tests, yeah. I think, and, and that's I think that's uh, critical. Yeah. Is, is making sure you have that a mapped out, so you, you you've got the content there, and then how you know how they're going to get there, and then but make, making sure that you have the proper tracking methods, yeah, that's so, a good point. so that you can look at and do things like. You know, A/B testing things. So maybe we try this ad copy over here versus that one, or this image over here versus that, and yeah. and, and kind of see what's what, what you know what's more effective versus others, and then and learn from that, and yeah. then be able to to go from there. Um, in terms of, I'll just ask a, a follow up on that. Just in terms of the di distribution uh, technology, you mentioned right. marketing stack there before, <laughs> right? Marketing stack is, I mean the the possibilities I feel like the today yeah. are just endless. Yeah. There's an amazing infographic or this uh, this graphic you see floating around on the internet talking about the evolution of MarTech. Yeah, right? the, the MarTech chief and he's got his own <laughs> website. And he, it's awesome stuff and he's got the you know the top 11,000 <laughs> yeah, platforms exactly. or whatever it is. Yeah. So it's just you can cut really like get lost in the shuffle very right. easily. Like, yeah. And then it's, oh we need this and we need this and we need this and we need that. and there's so many things where you know where do you where do you start? Yeah. I think you start with something simple. Hmm. Um, try to figure out what your competitors are using, yeah. the ones that are doing well. <laughs> Look at that. But sometimes it's more a matter of just finding people near you in mm -hmm. your network that are using something. Mm -hmm. um, I have zero stats on this, but it would be a great stat to get. Oh, perfect. Which yeah. is, yeah. I, I think that if you use technology platforms that other people near you are using, mm -hmm. your ability to su succeed with those platforms goes way up because you've got this built in support system. You got this yeah. thing, you know, somebody, and you see it in, dig, in video, we see it in audio, a lot of technical areas. It's like, if other people are using it, I can text them real quick and say, I can't figure this out, how did you do it? <laughs> yeah. And they, you know, you get an answer back. And I think you can be more successful just mm -hmm. because you have a network around you that does that. I think a lot of the platforms are learning that today. Mm -hmm. They start to have user groups locally and online and sure. everything oh, yeah. to, to get involved. And I think online's great, but if you have somebody local, that you guys can like sit down at Starbucks with a computer that, and, yeah, and look at it. Sense. Yeah, that, that, that makes a big, big difference, I think. Um, so that's one piece. I think the other thing is just to start to, to look at the platforms. Don't get all excited about all the bells and whistles. <laughs> sure. Because yeah. they might have 6,000 bells and whistles, but you got to hope you can use like three of them today to get <laughs> yeah, started. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And, and right. that. So, so what I'm hearing is start simple. Start with something that Absolutely. you can actually use, that'll work. And, and you can you know, prove out the model and kind of go from there. Yeah. Right? You know, there's a lot of companies that today can start with just an email platform and an Excel spreadsheet mm -hmm. and get there. Now, you got a sales team and everything. You're going to have to start thinking about integrations there, too. But you'd be surprised. You're probably almost better off going with that and making something work and get mm -hmm. traction than you are to unveil. And we've both seen this. <laughs> this I won't use a brand. Yeah. But <laughs> a large integration in, yes. into an organization. And they spend two years doing that. And that's two years that they're not really marketing to the right. customer. Yeah, absolutely. Great, well, you know, great points. Uh, so, so to recap, we've, we've got the, the, the top four questions that you need to ask before you jump into a digital marketing campaign. The first one being is, you know, figure out what that budget is. You're gonna need to spend stuff on uh, lead gen tactics and, and, and certainly uh, some uh, different platforms and technology you might, might need. Figure out who your audience is. 
those those personas, not just okay, we're targeting you know X Y Z person, but really drill into those verticals. Look at the people that you're going to be targeting inside of that. Uh, the next one is figuring out what their challenges are, so that you can really that'll help influence the content that you need to be able to make that's going to be relevant to them. And then that last piece is well, developing that content and figuring out what the distribution methods and the technologies are to be able to get well, quote unquote, eyeballs on your content. So. Uh, thanks again for watching this video. If there's a particular topic that you'd like uh, to, 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 uh, for us to talk about, or if you have a particular challenge that you'd like uh, us to take a crack at, please send your information in. You can uh, send us an email at industrialsage.com forward slash questions. We'd be happy to answer them for you. And be sure to like and subscribe us, follow us on iTunes and all the other great social media properties that these videos are going to be on. And until next time, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.